السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن الناس من يتخذ من دون الله أندادا يحبونهم كحب الله والذين آمنوا أشد حبا لله ولو يرى الذين ظلموا إذ يرون العذاب أن القوة لله جميعا وأن الله شديد العذاب صدق الله العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us of different type of people that are in this world. And Quran goes in a lot of detail talking about people's personalities. And this is one of those amazing ayahs of Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the major by which we can understand where we belong to. What is our personality? What type of people are we? When it comes to our connection with those who are favoring us, with those who are doing something for us, how do we treat those people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا Amongst people, there are some. Amongst people, there are some who choose partners with Allah. يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ They love those partners the way they are supposed to love Allah. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا But the people of true iman and faith أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ They love Allah the most. Many times people ask, how much does Allah love us? But in reality, we don't even have to ask that. Seeing all the blessings of Allah, the millions of ni'mas that we are receiving every second. We don't even have to ask how much does Allah loves us. The question is, how much do you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have you ever asked yourself that how much do I love Allah? When you raise your hands, making dua, have you ever said it? From your heart, I love you, Ya Allah. Or just say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. Rabbana wa atma alina luna. And many times we don't even know what we are saying, what Imam have said, and that's it. It's done. After dua, just stand at the door of the masjid and ask people, what did you ask? No one would know. No one would know what we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did we say to our Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala? In salah, did you say something to Allah? Not me. Maybe the Imam said something. But I don't know. 
when you love someone, you talk to that person, you pay full attention to this person, you make sure you keep on looking at the person, and you try to understand each and every word that this person will tell you. And if this person will tell you certain words in a language that you cannot understand, that person knew French, you don't know French, told you a few words in French, you would beg the person, could you please tell me what did you just say? No, I can't tell you now. It's a secret. I will tell you next year. Oh, I can't wait till next year. Could you please tell me right now? No, I won't. I can't tell you now. Every five minutes you would call the person. You would email the person. Could you explain those words to me? And here we recite Quran, ayah after ayah, same ayahs every day, but we don't even know what we have said. We don't even know what Allah is telling us. And we never care to understand. Of course, doesn't that tell us where our connection is when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How weak that connection is that we don't even care what was said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to me? Quran. What is Quran? Quran, believe me, if you understand what Quran is, is a letter of love from your Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. It shows you how much he loves you. Each and every word, I'm not saying ayah, each and every word of Quran is full of love from Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, showing how much he cares about you, how much he loves you. Let me give you a simple example. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَسَوَّاهُنَّ سَبْعَ سَمَاوَاتِ He is the one who created everything on this earth for you. Then he turned to the heavens and he made them, perfected them as seven heavens. You read the ayah. Okay. Whatever it means. He created the heaven and he created the earth. This is what it is telling us. Our situation is, when we talk about Allah, وَالْعِيَازُ billah, May Allah protect. But it looks like we are talking about an architect who designed this place, this building. Beautiful building, mashallah. Very nice. He designed it nice. And the contractor was also very professional. Oh, he had experience of 25 years. Very good, excellent person. They did a real good job. Look at this beautiful design. Look at this color. Look at this. MashaAllah, beautiful. Any love for that contractor, for that architect in your heart? No. You don't care about who, the, who that person was. All you know is his name was this. He belonged to this company maybe. This is how we talk about Allah. Created the universe. MashaAllah, beautiful universe and all of that. But any feeling in our heart towards our Rabb who created all of this? No. Does that move us when we talk? My Rabb created all of this. You sit with your son who's being running away and you try to explain to him, son, I bought a car for you. I got your house. I paid all of her tuition for the universities. I may spend so much on you. I did this, I did this, I did this. Then why are you giving me a hard time? Why are you doing this? Why would you do something like this? Son, I'm doing all of this for you. You would see tears in your eyes. You really have a strong feeling that he should appreciate what, he's, you, what you have done for him. You have done so much for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just talking to us the same way. Oh my servants, where are you running away? Where are you going? Who's giving you better than what I'm giving you? Everything that you see on this earth, in this universe, oh my servant, I have created all of this for you. Where are you going? Why are you disobeying me? Why are you trying to run away from me? Look at the love of Allah. I did all of this just for you. So that you be happy and you could do my ibadah properly. This is what we really need. 
that our hearts be connected to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. True connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when you stand in your salah, you enjoy standing before your Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's my time that I can talk to my Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, as salatu mi'raj al mu'mineen Salah is the mi'raj of the believers. Just like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went for mi'raj and he talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, if you want to talk to Allah, stand to your salah. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Malik Yawm Al-Deen. Look at this sweetness. Look at this sweetness. It's full of sweetness. That your Rabb is calling you, is inviting you, is telling you his connection with you, his Rahman, his Rahim, his Rabbul Alameen. Harun Rashid. Well-known Muslim ruler. Very successful ruler in the world. I'm not just saying Muslim ruler. Where is mo- one of the most successful rulers? He used to look at the cloud and say to the cloud, Um turi hai sushi khirajuki. Go and rain wherever you want in the world. The outcome of this rain will come to me. You won't go out of my land. You can go to Spain and rain over there in Spain. He's standing in Baghdad. Go to Spain. All the outcome, all the fruits, all the growth from Spain will come to me. His wife is well known also, Zubaydah. Who had a well dug outside of Makkah Mukarrama that is well known, Ain Zubaydah, because people of Makkah didn't have water. That was the first well that was dug out of Makkah and then the water supply was going to uh, Makkah Mukarrama. Anyway, once Harun al-Rashid and Zubaida are going for a walk after Salatul Fajr. At that time, there was a scholar who's also well known in the history of Islam, whose name was Bahlul. Bahlul was a scholar who pretended that he is little insane. That was the best method he found to get his message through to the king and the rulers. Because if you were a real scholar at that time, the kings will force you to become a judge, to become imam, something like that. They will give you a position within, under the government's control. He did not want to have any position where he would really have to go by the government's orders. So he pretended that he's insane. He doesn't know what's happening. Sometimes he will just sit and laugh and smile. So they excused him from all of those responsibilities. And at the same time, because they thought that, you know, he is not a very normal person, so he can come to the castle, he can come and talk to the king at any time. He was, the doors were open for him. I just remembered once, Harun al-Rashid was holding to a staff, to a stick. He was holding to a staff. And he gives it to Bahlul saying, if you see a person who is more insane than you are, give it to him. Bahlul took it. And he used to hold it all the time in his hand. One day, Bahlul got the news that Harun Rashid is on, is on his deathbed. So he went to him. He says, where are you going Harun? I'm leaving this world. So you're going somewhere else? Yeah, the world of Akhirah. Oh, you must have a better castle over there than this one. This is why you're leaving this one and going there. He said, that I don't know. Then why are you going? He said, you know, everyone has to go. But since you knew that you were going, you must have built a nice place for you over there. He said, no, I didn't build anything over there. He takes this stick, he gives it to Harun al-Rashid. He says, you keep this. 
If you, you told me that if I see a person who's more insane than I am, I should give it to him, then that's you. Because you are leaving this world you knew you would leave. And just for a short time in this world, you built such a beautiful castle and you are going over there. You knew you would live over there longer than, than you lived over here and you didn't build anything over there. So Harun Rashid is going for a walk with his wife. Zubaydah. Rahimahullah. Dasi Bahlul, he saw them coming. So what he did was he started building small homes out of mud. Harun Rashid went to Bahlul. What are you doing, Bahlul? I'm building homes. What are you going to do with these homes? He said, I will sell them. What would be the price that you would sell these homes for? He said, the price is, you pay thousand dollars, we can say dollars, they used to call it dinar, thousand dinar as a sadaqah, and I will give it to you in Jannah. Pay thousand dinar as a sadaqah, and I will give you thousand dinar or a castle like this one, better than this one in Jannah. He said, thousand dinar for this small home that you're making, building out of mud, that's too much. Zubaydah went there. What are you doing, Bahlul? Building homes? What are you going to do? Sell these homes for thousand dinar? You give it as a sadaqah, don't give it to me, give it as a sadaqah, and I will guarantee, I will give it to you in Jannah. She said, thousand dinar, mashallah, it's cheap to get a house in Jannah. Right away, she takes thousand dinar out, gives it as a sadaqah. Dina, uh, Bahlul, you take this, give it as a sadaqah, and inshallah, you guarantee me a house in Jannah. He said, sure. Next day, night time when they go to sleep, Harun Rashid saw a dream that he was in Jannah, he sees a beautiful castle. So he asked the angels to take him into the castle. They said, no, that's not yours. So whose castle is this? This is your wife's. This is Zubaydah's. How did she get it? She bought it from Bahlul yesterday. Yeah, but she's my wife. Can I go in? They said, no, it doesn't work this way over here. You can't take someone else's property, even if that's your wife. And right there he wakes up very disturbed. In the morning they went out walking again. Now, they see Bahlul again building the homes. I don't know if she says, it's my opportunity today. He went to Bahlul. Bahlul, what are you doing? Building homes. What are you going to do? I will sell them so that people can buy a house from this. A house in Jannah. What's the price? The price is you pay your kingdom. You pay your kingdom. He said, Bahlul, yesterday you were selling it for a thousand dinar, and today you are saying that you want the whole kingdom but just for this house? He said, yesterday you were going to buy it without seeing it, and now you have already seen it. What did you see last night, O Harun? You saw it already last night. So now you want to buy after seeing it, so you have to pay a higher price. Imagine the connection people has, have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people like Bahlul. What type of connection they established with Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala? Just like Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, when he was informed, by Amr ibn al-As when he conquered Egypt. That the water have stopped in the river Nile. And that's the only source for the people of Egypt to survive. And every year this water stops. Something that all historians have written this. Look at our books. Look at the non-Muslims books. They have written this incident. The water stops every year. 
they prepare a young girl and they throw her in the river. It's all the effect of shayateen and jinns. They take the girl and then they let the water flow again. Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu, when he conquered Egypt, and just remembered, reminds me something that just clicked in my mind, and I really, time alhamdulillah is there, that I can go back to it. One of the cities that is well known in Egypt, established by Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu, is called Fustat. Fustat. You know what Fustat means in Arabic? Tent. Why that city is called Fustat and up to this day is known with the same name, Fustat. When Amr bin al-As radiallahu anhu arrived Egypt with the other Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, they stationed somewhere out of the city. That was just a desert. When they put their tents over there, after some days, when they were re ready to leave, Amr bin al-As radiallahu anhu, in the evening, he saw a pigeon inside the tent. He saw a pigeon in the tent. When people took their tents out, Amr bin al-As radiallahu anhu left the tent over there. People asked him, Amir al-Mu'mineen, why don't you pick up your tent? He said, no, I'm not going to disturb this pigeon that's in the tent. He left his tent over there for the pigeon. And this is why that then finally there was a city that was established over there and the city is known as Fustat, as the place of tent. This is the rahmah, this is the mercy that they learned from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even for animals. So Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu wrote a letter to Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu that this is the situation, what should we do? When that person who took the message arrived, Medina Munawwara, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu at that time was walking on the streets of Medina Munawwara. When he got the message, right away, it wasn't a big deal for him. For us, this would be a nightmare. How could we solve this problem? There is no solution. I think we have to do what people had been doing. Just go ahead and do it. And Google the internet and there is a fatwa that says it's halal. And then you're there, you, there you go. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, right there he gets a paper and he writes some message. He says, go and give it to Amr ibn al-As and tell him to throw my letter in the river. And that's it. You don't need to do anything else. Amir al muminin how are we going to solve that problem now by throwing your letter into the river? But people knew who Amir al muminin Umar ibn al-Khattab is. He went back. When Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu looked at the letter, he said, I'm not going to do that when I'm there by myself. This, is, this shows us their iman, their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will invite all the people of Egypt, especially the non-Muslims. And once they are gathered, then I will do what Amir al muminin have asked us to do. What was that? When he gathered the people, he reads the letter to people that says, Min Amir al muminin Min Abdullahi Umar ibn al-Khattab, from the servant of Allah. Umar ibn al-Khattab to the river Nile. Assalamu alaykum. May Allah's peace be on you. If you flow through Allah's permission, then keep on flowing without demanding anything in return. And if you flow on your own, we don't need a single drop from you because Allah will provide us with our needs. And they threw it. All the people are there. Non-Muslims are there to watch. What's going to happen? Are you going to get the water just by this letter? And as soon as he threw it in, the water started flowing in the river. And from that day till today, never stopped again. Iman, their connection, 
with the Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala, they knew if Allah will open the way, there is no one who can close it for me. Their real trust was in Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we need. Our connection with Allah. And I don't just want to leave you, leave you with as talk that, you know, connect yourself to Allah. Very quick, few steps. How could we establish this connection? Quick steps. Very simple steps. That if we are really serious about establishing our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, insha'Allah, these simple steps will take you a long way. And then insha'Allah, you consult your ulama where to go from there on. Number one, make sure when time salah of salah comes in, leave everything and just pay attention to salah. Convince yourself there is nothing more important in my life than salah. That's it. Say for example, we are going to pray Jum'ah. Would you be able to pray this Jum'ah again? No. Next Jum'ah, you will pray next Jum'ah. Not only Jum'ah. See, it's time for Zuhr. You would perform Salat to Zuhr. Once you have done the Fard of Zuhr of today, can you pray this Fard again? No. This Fard is gone. If you got 10% of the reward, that's all you got from today's Zuhr. You can't get 15%. That's it. It's gone with 10 person, it's gone. So there is nothing more important in your life than the first salah that you are performing at that time. Now imagine when the thoughts will come to you of here and there, my work, my home, this and that, you will convince yourself nothing is more important than the salah that I'm performing. Number two, every morning and every evening, recite some tasbihat. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. This will establish your connection with your Rabb. At least when you say it with your tongue, with your mouth, after some time, this Allah dhikr will get into your heart. And you will start loving your Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you talked about someone too much, then you start feeling, having feeling for that person. Number three, very simple. When you are laying down in your bed, we all do that, you just keep on thinking about here and there, waiting to fall asleep. What do we do when we are waiting to fall asleep? Just keep on thinking about things, about work, about business, I will do this, I will say this. Next morning you forget all of that. It's a waste of time. At that time, talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, how kareem you are, how great you are, how merciful you are, how much you have blessed me, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, I love you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, I really appreciate what you have given me. Ya Allah, make me true servant of yours. May allow me to appreciate what you have given me. Ya Allah, forgive my sins. Ya Allah, I'm a wrongdoer. I have done a lot of wrong things. Ya Allah, I have disobeyed you a lot. Ya Allah, I have displeased you. Please forgive me. Just keep on talking. You don't even have to move your tongue in your mind. Allah knows what you are thinking. Just keep on talking to Allah until you fall asleep. And this, within no time, you would see how much peace of mind this will give you and how you feel this strong connection in your heart with Rabbul Alameen. That when you are in a heart, having a hard time, when a person is really going through some difficulty, you feel like going and talking to someone or you want to call someone. Here, you get into the habit of calling your Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala every time when you have a situation. Be it a good or difficult situation, you talk to your Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us true connection with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make all of us true servants of his. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us to be the true ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, true followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and true people of the part of this ummah of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayni khalqih, sayyidina wa habibina wa nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Amen.